and welcome everyone in today's show we're going to be talking to gary m krebs about his debut novel little miss of dark county the origins of Anne, annie oakley based on the true um story of an american icon so don't go away stay with us we come back we're going to be having more on gary krebs If you're just joining us, welcome to the Writer's Corner live show. I'm your host, Bridgette Limbanda from Cape Town in South Africa. And welcome to the start of our new lineup for 2021. Our stream today is made possible by StreamYard, Creative Edge and BeLive Media, helping you to humanize your brand. If you want to know when we go live on our channel, please go ahead and like our Facebook page and over on YouTube, also, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will get a notification when we are live. In today's show, we're going to be talking to Gary Krebs about his debut novel, Little Miss of Dark County, The Origins of Annie Oakley. But before we do that, let's say a warm welcome to my friend and co-host, Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Um, Mary is a special needs and disabilities advocate and also the award-winning author of the Poolicious children's book series. She lives in Nashville, in the USA, so let us know where you are joining us from. And so without ado, Mary, welcome to the show. Let's see where Mary's gone. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I forgot I muted. Yes, because I have noise today around me. But uh, hi, how are you doing? It's so nice to see you. And um, I'm, we're excited. This is the new year. It's our first show of the year. And um, this is going to be a wonderful year. We're all looking forward to it being brighter and more fun and exciting. And um, well, maybe some more normalcy, right? Absolutely. I think we can all do with a lot more normal than we had in 2021. That's for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're excited about our author today and, and Gary starting our year out because he is a he's a man who wears many hats and um, we're excited to bring him on and learn about what he does and all his roles that he plays. And um, I can, you know, just tell you from my own experience, he's just a really genuine good guy. And um He's uh, he loves what he does. He's very passionate about what he does. And uh, we are so excited to have him on. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know Gary M. Krebs, he is a novelist, a collaborator, a ghostwriter, a literary agent, and also a former trade book publisher and editor. So he comes with tons and tons of experience. So if you're watching the show live with us now on the replay, please pop us your questions, um, especially if you are a new author or an author wanting to take things to the next level, do come and ask your questions because Gary got, you know, has got lots of knowledge to share. Um, an interesting fact about Gary is also that he was the US editor of the Guinness Book of Records. That that was that was interesting to know about him and so um what we're going to focus on today is his debut debut novel which is called little miss of dark county the origins of annie oakley based on the true story of an american icon and a very interesting one at that it was quite interesting when i did a bit of um research on who she is and what she did it was quite fascinating so shall we not waste any more time and get gary on the show shall we uh, yes, let's do it. Excited about it. I am too. Looking forward to having Gary.
And welcome to the show, Gary. So great to have you join us today. Thank you so much for having me, Brigetti. And uh, thank you, Mary, for introducing us all. Um, and Happy New Year to everyone. Oh, we're excited to have you. So you love this project. This is one of your, this is a big baby for you, isn't it? Well, I work on so many books that it's hard to put one baby over the other. But they're all kind of <laughs> different ways. But, but this one um, was very unexpected. It's a, a very different kind of project for me. So <laughs> I got very, uh, I fell into it by accident. Mm, Some awesome. accidents are nicer than others. So, so what was it about Annie Oakley's story that intrigued you, and what was it that made you want to write this book about her? So, for years, I've been trying to write uh, comic novels and screenplays, and of course, I've been collaborating on nonfiction books and ghostwriting and all of that. Um, so, writing a historic novel in general was not anywhere on my radar until about five years ago. Um, and certainly the idea of tackling an icon like Annie Oakley wasn't anywhere on my radar at all. But then um, I saw one of those uh, floating news clips that had gone viral that just had a paragraph biography of Annie Oakley. And in it, it had this tiny little reference to how she had been held prisoner for two years uh, in a cabin in the woods. And to me, that just threw me for a loop because Annie Oakley being so iconic and and so famous and so gifted at what she had done, uh, it just struck me as so odd that nobody seemed to know this little detail about her life. And so I it, it became a, a bee in my bonnet to figure out what exactly had happened. And it turns out that for two years, she really was held captive in a cabin in a remote part of the woods by this young couple. Uh, they had a bratty child and this couple physically, emotionally, ment mentally, and probably sexually abused her for two years when she was a little girl. And wow. the more I dug into it, um, I realized that uh, Annie, who was then Phoebe Ann Moses, uh, she had an even tougher childhood before then. Um, her father died, her oldest sister died. She had two other young uh, siblings who died, one in childbirth, one as an infant. And her mother um, had seven or so other children and could not sustain the family farm. So uh, young Phoebe Ann Moses became something of an orphan and went from place to place. The more I dug, the more pain I discovered. So she ended up staying at a place called the infirmary, which for all intents and purposes was uh, an orphanage. Um, and she was taunted uh, by the other kids there and bullied. So when this young couple came to the infirmary uh, and said they needed someone to help them raise their child, uh, young Phoebe volunteered to go just to escape the infirmary. Little did she know that uh, she would be so trapped and in such danger. Uh, they obviously didn't have cell phones or anything or anywhere to go. Uh, for no 911. No 911. So she was really trapped. Um, right. But what really stuck with me amidst all of this was that Anne, uh, young Phoebe was somebody who did not have training uh, to shoot a gun. Um, her father and mother were Quakers and didn't really like gun violence and forbade her from using their rifle. But somewhere along the line, when she was very, very little, she found her father's hunting rifle and started hunting when she was, uh, you know, six years old. And uh, she found that she was quite good at it. So at the point that her family had no money uh, and no food, she actually uh, went off, snuck off and hunted in the, in the, uh, in the in the fields and uh, in and actually trapped some animals. She hunted and shot down some animals and fed her family. So uh, it's a pretty remarkable story. She was self-taught, but then the rest of her life, as things uh, progressed and got worse for her, she was deprived of her ability to use her precious rifle. Um, she certainly didn't have access to it while she was held prisoner um, in the woods. So. Um, 
in my research, I tried hard to find out the name, the names of a couple uh, who held her prisoner. Um, the curator at the uh, museum in uh, Dark County called the Garst Museum, which is really the Annie Oakley Museum, they couldn't, they knew, who, they know who, it, who they are, but they can't reveal it because they're a descendant of that family still alive. Um, wow. so I, did the, I did the best that I could and uh, came up with uh, calling them Mr. and Mrs. Wolf. And mm. uh, there are a lot of Wolf references in, in, in Annie's life. Um, and she did refer to them as the wolves. So when I told the, the curator that he called them the wolves, she thought that, that was perfect. Um, that, is, that is perfect. And so also it, adds to the mystery. Yeah. And to me, it's just remarkable that she had gone through all of these struggles, endured so much. And I don't want to reveal too much, but after she does uh, get through her, orde her ordeal with the wolves, it's not long after that that she starts winning shooting contests, um, beating longtime uh, people who had been involved in competitions and stuff, um, and built her name up to the point that, you know, when she was very young, she was meeting with queens and kings and dignitaries and um, became a household name. It's a really remarkable story. And what drew me to it was really that someone like her, was, she was a regular person, she was somebody who endured a lot, overcame obstacles. And I think by today's standards, I think uh, her story is still quite universal. Um, things have not changed in terms of uh, child abuse and domestic violence and things like that. So if you think about it, some, if someone like Annie Oakley had gone through it, imagine what other people were going through at that time up through present and before then up through present. So I really, empathized with her and felt a lot of passion for her story. Mm, yeah, it's, a very, um, it's a very relatable story, as you said, even in our day. And, you know, right now with the pandemic being what it is, um, you know, the, the kind of things that she went through as a child, um, you know, domestic violence and that sort of thing is, is things that has been highlighted by the pandemic. So even right now, that story is incredibly um, relevant and pertinent for our time, even though it's so many years ago. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people that can relate to that story. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, so I just want to touch for a second, but you, you have done what I think most authors want to do. And so the book is going to be turned into a movie, right? Yes, yeah, so I sold, uh, well, it's very interesting because I studied screenwriting uh, at Tisch School of the Arts in the Dramatic Writing Program at NYU uh, a long time ago. And <laughs> screenwriting was what I hoped to do and had a passion for. Uh, I had some close calls over the years, met with some producers, some managers, met with uh, various people who had connections and, and placed well in various contests, but nothing ever happened. And I made a strategic plan in this case to write it as a novel first and then write the screenplay second, because I thought that um, it would play out so well as historic fiction that I thought as an agent, I could pull in my contacts and my resources, get that published and then leverage that um, into uh, hopefully then selling the screenplay. And I went through the same hoops that everybody else did. Um, my expertise as a literary agent is predominantly in nonfiction. So uh, even though I do have some fiction contacts and expanded them and got to know a lot of fiction editors um, and received a lot of, of praise uh, for my work, um, it just wasn't quite the right fit for any of the houses that I approached. So I got the same rejections <laughs> that everybody else usually gets. Um, until I landed um, uh, a publisher in White Bird Publications, and they got it right away, um, and were so happy that the manuscript was clean. They didn't have to do much uh, of any editing to it. Uh, loved the story, and it all it all came together very very quickly. Um, my story uh, with the movie is is really interesting because you never know when things will happen. So you have to make your own serendipity. Um, I went to an author event uh, pretty much a year ago to 
to the day to today. <laughs> um, and it was in Florida before the pandemic, if such a time ever existed. Right. And um, I primarily did this as a favor uh, for a great friend of mine, uh, Rick Frischman, who's a well-known book marketer, book publicist. And when he asked me to do something, I jumped because I love the guy. So uh, at this event, he helps people uh, who want to write books. And so I became the keynote speaker at that event. And sure enough, there was somebody there uh, who heard uh, me speak and heard